Hey guys, it's Kevin S. Murray for Finding Carter, Season 2, Episode 6, Stay With Me. And I was really looking forward to this episode. I mean, last week's episode really impressed me. I thought it was a lot better than uh, the previous episode. And uh, I was definitely seeing, if you know, wondering if this episode was going to be just as good. And I have to say, probably best episode of the season. I loved this episode. I thought this was another really solid episode. And I know some people are really complaining about Taylor's character, but honestly, I'm going to talk about why I am enjoying these storylines and what I liked about this episode. There was a lot of stuff I definitely enjoyed about this episode, and uh, let's get into this episode because I overall really enjoyed it, and I thought overall it was a really good episode. So, we start off right where we left off last week because we see that, of course, you know, Max thought that Crash um, had the drugs in, you know, had the coke in the truck, and... Crash is insisting that he had nothing to do, that he did not even set up um, to meet with a coke-filled car. And Crash is stunned, and that's what's going on, and Crash says that Max thinks that Shay is running drugs. And he tells Carter about the car with the trunk full of coke, and says Crash asked him to meet the car. And Max says that Crash has a habit of destroying lives, and Max asks how Crash cannot know. And Crash says he's not that guy anymore, and asks Cra Carter to vouch for him, which really has been Crash's big storyline, is him proving that he's not that guy anymore. And... She asks where he got the money for Lori, and Crash says he did it all right this time to get a clean slate. He goes to walk out, says if he can't convince her, he should stop trying to convince himself, and I thought that we were just going to see the end of Crash right there. I thought that would have been fine, but that's not the end we see of Crash. And we can see that he's really genuinely upset about what happened. I definitely like seeing that, because not even Carter really trusts him. I can understand why. I mean, he really hasn't done a good job of proving himself. I mean, he hasn't, you know, this definitely wasn't as good, you know, he didn't do, if he wanted to prove himself, this wasn't the best way to do it because now everyone thinks that he is the one that did this. And even though he didn't do this, he, they think he is. And I like seeing that. So I thought that was definitely really well done seeing something I definitely really enjoyed. Also, I have to say that the actor that plays Crash, this is probably his best performance on the show. I thought he was amazing in this episode. So, Carter tries to call him, but he's not answering, probably because he just is really ashamed of what happened, and he she hears Lori come in, and she goes downstairs to ask why, well, not Lori, um, Elizabeth, I'm sorry, this recap says Lori, I don't know why. Um, she hears Elizabeth coming in, she goes downstairs, that's why she's so late. Carter sees she's dressed up, and Elizabeth says it was a, just a drink after work, but Carter says it's after midnight, and she knows that something's going on between, you know, Elizabeth, she knows that she's seeing someone, and next morning she tells the kids it was just one date with Kyle, and Grant says they all knew they were dating, and says she's in denial, and I have to say, Grant wasn't annoying here, I would have wanted them to continue the Regan storyline, but he wasn't annoying, I mean, honestly, I can understand what, what he's saying, definitely, and she shouldn't keep things from her kids. Um, she says it was a date, not dating, and Taylor says 50% of kids have divorced parents, and she says that's not happening. Carter asks if they're just married and dating, and Carter walks out, and, uh, I thought that was a really, and I love Taylor's line here. She probably says the funniest line of the episode, maybe the funniest line of the season. She says, our family needs a reality show, which, yeah, they do. I mean, they have such a fucked up family that, yeah, they, I would love to see a reality show by them, honestly. It'd be great if we saw the Wilson family reality show. That'd be great. So Taylor goes upstairs to study when Grant comes up, and he asks why she's studying on a Sunday, and she asks if he's okay. He asks how she never breaks his sweat, and she says it helps her ignore her problems. He says this is all giving him anxiety, and she tells him to sit, and he says he had a panic attack last night, figuring what to wear last night. He says he's talking to his therapist, but it's not really helping, because as we know, he definitely has a lot of stress going on, and he says the therapist offered pills and asked what she thinks, and she says Carter is the drug advisor, but he says Taylor has it all figured out and Taylor says a lot of kids get dependent on their meds then use them ir irresponsibly and she says he has other options and hugs him tight and he says it's pushing his limits but says it's effective and hugs her back and he thanks her and goes and I thought that was a really sweet scene I have to say I definitely like seeing that so Carter goes to the shop and overhears Crash confronting Shay about the drugs and Shay says that Max should have never seen it and Shay asks if Max will snatch and basically will snitch and Crash says no and Shay says he's been doing this for 15 years and says his money got Crash out of prison and for a second I'm like is Crash telling the truth? Did he actually do this? And Car Crash says he should have told him. Shay says no matter what, how Crash dressed himself up, he'll never be like the kids he used to sell to. And another mechanic crashes Carter lurking, grabs her by the arm, brings her in. Carter says it's obviously a bad time. Shay recognizes her as Crash's girlfriend, and he tells the other guys to leave. So Shay asks why she's there, and she says she came to see Crash, and he tells her to go. But Shay says she should stay, and Crash says she doesn't care what he does. 
and uh, she tells Shay that Crash is better with than him, and Shay gets sleazy with her, and then tells Crash that his dad tried to get out of the life too, and it didn't work out, and he tells Crash there is no out, and I like that Shay's saying this, because Crash really wants to turn things around, but can he really? Honestly, I understand what Shay's saying, that there really is no way out. I mean, he's definitely always going to be the prime suspect. There's no way where it's going to, there's no way he can just get himself out of all these things. Even though he wants to, he can't do that. And I like seeing that. So, basically, um, Shay gets sleazy with her, then tells Crash that his dad tried to get out of the life too, and he, it didn't work out, and basically he tells Crash there is no out, and Crash talks to Max and Carter, and he tries to figure out what to do, because he really wants some other options here, he wants to be able to get out of this, but he doesn't really know if he can get out of this, and basically... Crash talks to him, basically, he says he has enough money for one night in a hotel, he says he and his dad slept in his truck for a month, but she says that's crazy, and Max says maybe they could make it work there, but Carter says her house is safer, he says her family hates him, and she says she has to convince her mom, and they can tell her about the drugs, and she can help, and Crash says he's not a snitch, and says Shay did get him out of prison, Carter says she'll beg her mom, and Max says well, Elizabeth won't cave on this one, which she won't, and Carter says she won't listen to her, and Max goes to talk to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth says she can't let like, Crash in the house because obviously she doesn't trust him. And Max says Crash's uncle is threatening him. Now, why do I think Max ratted Crash out for a couple of reasons? One, Max doesn't trust Crash. Two, Crash ended their, his relationship with Taylor. Three, he knows that Elizabeth is not going to approve. So, I can understand people think Max is annoying, but let's face it, Max is not really an annoying character. He did this because he didn't want to... He didn't want, you know, Crash to be in a bad position. He didn't want things to end up bad for Carter. So I think that's why he did this. He basically had no choice but to do this. I think that's why he did what he did. So, basically, um, Max says that Crash's uncle is um, threatening him and says he's a bad guy. And she asks him about the danger... And basically, Max says Crash doesn't want anyone to know how scared he is. Max says Crash can't handle this alone. She reminds him that Crash left him to die. And Max says they accidentally became friends along the way. And Elizabeth caves and they blow up the air mattress. Elizabeth says there's a curfew, early lights out, and Crash stays out of her room. And Carter agrees and thanks her. So I like that Elizabeth did agree to some, to, to a degree. She definitely did sort of agree to letting Crash stay there. So David comes in and sees um, the mattress and she basically... Um, she says it's for Crash, and David says that Crash, he knew, he knows would never stay at their house. And Elizabeth says Crash is staying, and she's staying, so she can, ne she can watch him since he's in trouble, because she doesn't really trust him. And she asks David not to be sensitive, and he gets pissy, then says he'll go. And Elizabeth says she should have called. She says she'll explain over a glass of wine that they can figure out sleeping arrangements for them. So Max comes up to say hi to Taylor. He says, a full house tonight. She says she heard. He asks what she's making for dinner. She says she's making herself disappear. He says she looks nice. He asks if she wants to come to Birds, but she says she has plans with Ophi. It's very awkward between these two. Max says she must have had a good time at the fair. She says they're just having fun. He asks what that means. He asks if she really likes Ophi. He says he never thought she'd have sex with someone she doesn't care about, and she thinks he's having sex with Bird, but he makes it clear that they're not having sex. That it's simply just a friendship, and it's very pleasant platonic and I think he's telling the truth I definitely feel like him and Bird is just really platonic I mean we saw last week that they don't really have that much interest I definitely feel like he's just keeping a platonic between the two of them I don't think it's what Taylor thinks so Taylor says she doesn't care what he thinks and says she's going out with Ophi and says Max can vanish now he leaves she goes to her desk opens it and takes out the Tic Kat Tac container of pills and pops one so that is what Taylor is doing, and that may make sense with that conversation with Grant, that she's actually having drug problems now, and I kind of like seeing that. This rebellious side of Taylor, I actually really like seeing, definitely. I think it's really well done, and I don't like Taylor's character this season, but you're not really supposed to, because she's really going through this rebellious stage, and I really like seeing it. I think definitely they're handling it really well, and I mean, we all go through that at some point in our lives. We all go through this rebellious stage, and that's what Taylor's going through. And it's kind of similar to what they did on Awkward with Jenna. Definitely, it's very similar to that. The difference is Jenna was the main character, so I like that story a lot more than the one with Taylor. I think it's well done what they're doing here. I just thought the way Awkward did it was a lot better, because I'm not going to say this came out of nowhere, because it really didn't come out of nowhere, but it does kind of feel like, well, she was rebellious last season, it was just fun, but here are actually taking it seriously, because I think she's definitely overdoing it now. Definitely, I think she's overdoing it. So, I mean, she's popping pills, she's having sex with someone she doesn't know. I definitely think she's doing way too much. So, 
Carter cooks dinner and Crash and for Crash with Crash, and he says she always sees a silver lining. He says he can't believe he's there, and Elizabeth isn't throwing him out. You know, he's really surprised that it's going as well as it is, and she tells him he should tell Elizabeth that they smooth that that, and they kiss as Elizabeth comes in. And Crash is polite, and Elizabeth asks what's going on. Says it's not date night. She says if it looks like a date, Crash is out of there. Both teens tell her they get it. She tells him to stay out of Carter's room and to stay away from Grant. And Carter tells Crash that every superhero needs a villain. And Ovi and Taylor are in bed. And I thought that was kind of a funny line. I really like the interaction between these two. Definitely really funny. So Ovi and Taylor are in bed. They've just had sex. And she says she's hungry and hasn't eaten all day. He says they can figure out the perfect post hookup and pre-study sandwich. Pretty, pretty much because she's getting the munchies. That's what's happening. She's getting the munchies here. You know, she took drugs. You're obviously going to get the munchies. So... She says she wants the Elvis PB plus bacon and banana, and he says he's going to make her a sandwich that's a perk of being friends with benefits, and then Taylor collapses, and he runs to her. That was something I love seeing. I love that Taylor collapsed because I knew this wasn't going to work out for her. I mean, this is not the Taylor we all know. This is not the Taylor we saw in season one. This is not Taylor. So I like that Taylor collapsed because that's her, basically, that's her mind telling her, you got to, you know, wake yourself up and realize that what you're doing is wrong. So, I thought that was really good. So, Carter and Elizabeth make the bed, and she says she appreciates that Elizabeth's being nice, but doesn't have to treat him like he's a criminal, which, yeah, she doesn't. And Elizabeth says he is, and Carter says he was, and is trying for a clean slate. You know, he's just trying to prove himself that he that they can trust him. But Elizabeth's not really sure, and Elizabeth says there's no such thing for any of them. David comes in while Crash is loading the dishwater, sure, and Crash says he knows he's an unwelcome house guest, and... <sighs> David says that Liz is biased against people she's arrested. David says he likes people who care about his daughter. And I like seeing the difference between Elizabeth and David. That's something, something I love seeing in this episode was the difference between the way they handled it. So, basically, Carter says Elizabeth will never see him as any better. And Elizabeth says that Carter will break her heart. She doesn't want that for her. So, basically, you know, she doesn't want Crash to ruin things for her. And Carter says ever, she thinks Elizabeth is the one afraid of heartbreak, and she says they've been through everything and survived it all, and that's why she's so afraid of heartbreak, because, you know, Elizabeth's been through it, but they've been through a lot. I mean, think of what Crash and Carter have been through. He shot Max, and now he's turned his life around completely, and he's helping out, you know, think of what he did last week. He helped her out with the, with the tests and everything, and without, you know, Crash, she probably would not have done nearly as well on those tests had it not been for Crash motivating her. So she definitely has that, and I think that's really good. So, she tells Elizabeth there's nothing to be afraid of and that Elizabeth should be able to trust them. And I understand what she's saying there. David answers the door and it's Shay and he says he's there. And when Shay was there, I was like, oh shit, this is not going to because I don't definitely don't trust Shay. Shay obviously is not like Crash because Shay has not turned his life around and Crash has. And he says he's there to pick up his nephew and David and Elizabeth look like a united front as they stare him down. They know that something is up with Shay. They know that and I love seeing that. So, Elizabeth tells Shay it's not a family matter anymore, and Crash says he thinks Shay tracked Carter, and Shay tells Crash to get his things, but David and Elizabeth tells the kid to go back inside. Shay gets tough, and Elizabeth says he's on her property, and says she hopes this doesn't overlap with her day job, and flashes her badge. He says he just wanted to make sure Crash isn't being a bother, and... David says Crash isn't a bother, but Shay is and says to leave, and Shay cautions Crash to call him when he wants to talk and not to talk to anyone else. So I'm just thinking, Crash, please don't ally with him. Like, if he allies with him, that would be the worst thing for them to do. He's trying to prove that they can trust him, and if he did that, that would end up terribly for him. So... Shay leaves with his pal, and David hustles them all back inside. They sit down at the table, and David goes to check on Grant. Car Crash tells Liz that he's sorry about Shay, and she says if, he's, if he'll tell her what's going on, she can help. And Carter says that Shay is threatening him, and Carter makes it clear that Crash isn't part of anything. And Crash says that Shay is all the family he has. And Elizabeth says he should tell her what he knows so she can help. And Crash tells Carter he shouldn't have come there. He says Elizabeth has made him a better person, and he tells that no one will threaten them, and tells Elizabeth that Shay's real name is Walter chase and i like that he did tell elizabeth some of the truth and we find out some stuff about shay a little bit later but Ovi then revives taylor and asks what's going on he wants to take her to a doctor but she says she's tired and nauseous he asks if she could be pregnant and i'm just like no please don't do that and i thought they were gonna make taylor pregnant i really did and Taylor says she's sure she's not. She says she just took a study buddy before she came over. He asks why she took it and asks when she started using it and where she got it. Ovi says there are some bad pills out there, and Taylor says they were his, and <sighs> Ovi asks it. And, of course, we know that Ovi does these drugs, and now Taylor's doing them. 
and Ovi asked if she stole his stash and asked why she didn't ask. I have to say, probably Ofi's best episode. I really love seeing Ofi care for Taylor, because as I said, Ofi genuinely cares about Taylor, while Taylor just seems like she just wants to make Max jealous. It still seems like that's what's going on there. So he says she doesn't need them and that this isn't her, and which is not. I mean, Taylor is this, you know, really, think of Taylor, think of how Taylor was. Taylor was this, like, person that thought everything needed to be perfect and kind of like a perfectionist and she was getting straight A's and she's a really good student. She's not this rebellious, uh, druggy like Ophi is, because honestly, Ophi is a druggie and Ophi does admit that in this episode, which I like seeing. So I thought that was a really good scene and definitely something I really enjoyed. So, basically, Elizabeth asks if they have enough for a warrant. They think so, and Elizabeth says she can't talk anymore. She ends the call and goes to talk to David. And, of course, David doesn't know about her and Kyle, which I'm wondering if he is going to find out that Elizabeth is back with Kyle, because that's definitely something that he needs to know, and I hope that he does find that out. So, Crashing Carter up in her room, and he looks out the window, which, of course, they don't, Elizabeth doesn't know about this at this point. And he says, Shay is not one for empty threats, says Shay's people will come for him, even if Shay is locked up, and says the cops may arrest him, too, because they won't believe he was a part of it. And she asks what he'll do, and Crash says he thinks he needs to leave town. He says he'll be okay, and she asks how, and he says he says nothing, and nowhere to go. He says he can always go back to dealing. He lies back on her bed and says maybe Shay is right that people like him don't get to decide their future. And Carter tells him that their past year has been all uncertainty, but says she figured it out and says people like them always do and says they'll figure this out together. And I thought that was a really good scene. She lies down beside him. He puts his arm around her and we see a tattoo on his arm that's noticeable. And uh, we know he still has a tattoo on his arm, which I honestly, I'm not upset about that because tattoos don't go away. That's something that just doesn't go away. So basically, um... She lies down beside him, basically. Elizabeth asks David if he's okay on the couch, and he says he ha he is. Then asks how she is. David asks if she remembers the that fleet bag motel in Hawaii. And they laugh about it, and David says they survived it. I like that they're still sort of friends, and they are somewhat, you know, stable. They're not at each other's throats constantly. I like seeing that, because I thought they would just be at each other's throats, but they're not, and I like seeing that, you know, they are somewhat talking. So he says they were a good team and says he was glad he was there to deal with the Shay thing. He says maybe if they remember what they had, Elizabeth says the problem is she remembers more than that and says there's not so much, there's so much pain. And she says him, Lori, and losing Carter and says it's not over for her and she just can't deal with it right now. She says she doesn't think it will ever will be, which I do have to agree with her. I mean, it just seems like there's constant drama in their lives. And he says he's sorry and Elizabeth says she just wants peace. He says he wants that for her and Elizabeth says she thinks they need to move forward. And David says he doesn't want to get a divorce, but Elizabeth says she's sorry they just have to make it official she says she's tired she's tried and she walks away and he's floored and i can understand why she wants to do that honestly there's so much stress going on in her life that it's probably best they do do that i understand that david wants to fix things for the two of them but it's just not really the time right now they have so much stress going on in their lives david doesn't realize the amount of leverage that elizabeth has to deal with right now so Bird talks to Ophi, he tells her that Taylor took his stash, and Max is there, and Bird fills him in on Taylor taking pills, then fainting, and Max asks what the hell happened and where she is, and Max is furious, obviously, and you still see that Max does care about Taylor, which is something I love, is that Max, no matter what, will always care about Taylor, and that's something that I love seeing. So Ophi says he didn't give her the pills, didn't know anything about it, and Max says if he's gonna get the benefits, he should also try being a friend. And, which is true, I mean, it's friends with benefits, it's not just benefits, it's friends with benefits, you should try and make an effort to help her out. The thing is, though, Ophi's not someone to help her out, because Ophi is someone that's doing drugs, so he can't really help her out there. So Elizabeth finds Crash and Carter spooning on her bed, and I like that she just lets them sleep, because they're both asleep, so she turns out the lights and lets them be. Carter wakes up and looks around, she goes to the bathroom, knocks, he's not in there either, she sees an envelope on her nightstand and opens it. There's a note for him and she reads and starts crying. And you see that she's really upset. And we know we see that this is probably the last time we're going to see Crash for a while. And Ophi comes to see Taylor. And he says she didn't answer his text. She says she doesn't want a lecture. He gives back the book she left at his place. I have to say, these last three scenes felt like season one Finding Carter. This is what I want Finding Carter to be. And I thought these scenes were amazing. So... Basically, Ovi tells her that it's been great, but he can't fool around with her anymore. She calls him a hypocrite for being a drug dealer and dumbing her for doing drugs. Ovi says he's ending it because she'll break his heart, and he says he should have known she was on drugs, but he says he has blinders on because he cares about her, and he didn't really realize it. He says she and Max still have feelings for each other, which, yeah, they do, and she says 
Max doesn't care about her. All he says he's there if she wants more than benefits, and he kisses her cheek and then leaves, and you see that she's really pissed about this, but honestly, he did the right thing. Honestly. They had no chemistry. She, he loved her, while she just wanted to have sex with him, and now looks like she's gonna go to Gabe next week, which I'm not all looking forward to, because again, they're just giving Gabe a love interest, which, when he was after Carter last year, I can understand she turns to Gabe because she did have feelings for Gabe, if you remember in the first episode, but... You know, it, she's out of control, honestly. She's out of control, and I think it's going to take a lot to actually fix Taylor. So, the cops raid the auto shop. Elizabeth and Kyle are there. They head inside. The place looks like it's been cleared out. Elizabeth tells them to run Prince. She says they cleaned and wanders if someone tipped them off. Elizabeth goes home and asks Carter where Crash is, and he, she says he's gone, and she's still crying. Elizabeth says Shay's gone, too. She says she thinks someone tipped them off. Carter says it wasn't Crash, shows her the note, and Elizabeth reads it, and we then and then goes to sit with a crying crying Carter. He, she hugs her and says she's so sorry for what happened, and I like that she is genuinely sorry about that. So we see Max driving Crash to the bus station. He says he hopes he'll get to see some parts of the cool, some cool parts of the world. He joined the army and Crash hand, which probably is the best thing, best way for him to turn his life around is for him to join the army. And Crash hands Max his leftover Wii and says a stash is a terrible thing to waste. And Max wishes him luck. Crash gets on the bus. The note says that leaving Car is the hardest thing he's ever done. He says he loves her and would do anything for her. He says it's the only way he knows. And I like they're actually giving us a reason on why he's leaving. And Crash says she changed his life more than he thought was possible and helped him get there. And honestly, I think this was the plan all along for him to join the army. I think he wanted to do this. And Shay's back at the bus stop and watches crash leave he tells her he loves her and will be back for her then pr says promise crash and david then takes off his ring because he knows he's getting a divorce now and grant sits with taylor hugs her she stares the pink bear the ophi want her and elizabeth converts is still upset carter and then the episode ends so I thought it was a really great end of the episode. Definitely really enjoyed. Now we're halfway through the season now, and uh, the mid-season promo looks fucking crazy. I have to say, it looks like, um, as I said, Taylor's gonna go to Gabe now, and it looks like Taylor's gonna be a bitch for the rest of the season, which I'm fine with because she's just in this really um bitter state and really upset state and I can understand why but she needs to somehow get over this she needs to she needs to move on from this and realize that not everything is the end of the world not everything's about her because she's making everything about her and she needs to stop doing that now it does look like we're gonna see crash again but honestly I'm fine with that if we see crash and I like where they're going with crash I think it's a well in storyline but let me know do you guys think this is the end we've seen of crash do you really think that these two have a future if crash does return what's gonna happen with carter I'm very interested in seeing what's gonna happen there um, Taylor. Is there anything that can redeem Taylor? I think the only thing that can redeem Taylor is Max. That is the only person that can redeem her because it seems like Max is the only person she's going to listen to at this point. And even in this episode, it didn't seem like she listened to him. So, I guess we'll have to see what happens there. I like that Elizabeth and David officially decided to get a divorce because they do have problems and if, you know, they're going to see other people, it's probably best for them to get a divorce and I'm hoping that this does work out for them. I like that they're still friends, but they just can't be together right now. They have so much drama in their life. I'm sure they'll eventually get back together, but for right now, they just have so much going on that they really can't stay together and I like seeing that overall. I thought that was a really, really well done and we saw that. Um, overall, guys, I thought this was another really solid episode. I definitely really enjoyed it. Um, definitely probably best episode of the season, I have to say. I thought there were some amazing scenes in this episode. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode. I really hope they keep up, um, these kind of episodes. Because the last few episodes, this has been what Finding Carter needs to be. And definitely, I feel like they are going to turn around the rest of the season. Second half of the season looks really awesome. We're going to see Lori again. And we're going to see a Lori apparently try to kill herself. Which I think is pretty fucking crazy. But we'll have to see what happens, I guess, um, next week. I don't know what next week's episode's about. Because it was a mid-season promo and not for the, you know, for the next episode was for the rest of the mid-season wasn't as crazy as last year's but definitely looks like things are getting get crazy but but that's basically my review hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you guys saw this episode overall guys saw this was the best episode of the season i'll see you guys in my next video which will be for a movie review not a classic movie review but a movie review so i will see you guys for that okay bye